The Kansas City Chiefs report is presented by Roan. Upgrade your wardrobe today with Roan. R H O N E dot com slash chat sports. Code chat sports gets you 20% off. I'm Harrison Graham, and on today's Chiefs report, Isaiah Pacheco. He spoke to the media uh, today at uh, the early portion of training camp before Veterans Report. He's there because he's been injured. He says he'll be ready for week one. Also, his counterpart, Clyde Edwards Elaire. Is he going to have a role on this football team, or is his time in Kansas City up? ESPN did a sit-down interview with him, so wanted to explore that and discuss, give my thoughts on the show. Before we dive into that, plus more, are you excited to have Chiefs football back? We're back. We made it. Training camp is here. Like this video if you are. Let's get 500 likes on today's show. Can we do it, Chiefs Kingdom? I think we can. Hit that like button. Okay, let's talk about Pacheco. Is he ready to go? He's, of course, coming off a strong rookie season when he took over as the starter, you know, midway through the year, week seven, week eight, whatever it was. Uh, did have off-season shoulder and hand surgery, so he's been recovering from that. But he did say he'll be ready to play in week one, so we'll kind of see how it looks in camp and in the preseason. Did some more drills today, but... The team stuff is still uh, not quite there for team drills. He says, I trust the staff, and we were able to work out a plan. I'm getting back into shape, and we're working. I'm feeling great right now. It's just a process, and that takes time. Um, it didn't take much time for him to look like a really good player, I'll tell you that. Uh, uh, 4.9 yards per carry, you really love that. Uh, very efficient, right? Only 170 carries, yet still well over 800 yards, five touchdowns. So you kind of map that out over a full 17-game season where uh, he's the starting back. I mean, I think 1,000 yards is very much in his future. Of course, Jarrett McKinnon's going to play. Again, we'll see what Clyde Edwards' role, Allaire role is. Uh I'm still not convinced he'll be on this team, but uh, the point is, is Pacheco's the lead dog, and uh, the upside is there. We saw that last year. Uh, there's simply no doubt about it. The guy runs with power. He just runs angry. Like, you hear that all the time. It's kind of a cliche. Like, he plays angry. Yeah, he looks for contact, and he runs dudes over, and you absolutely love it. I mean, he's got some uh, Adrian Peterson in his game, I would say. Uh, he's just explosive. He's powerful. I'm excited to see what year two of Pacheco looks like in this offense, of course, once he's fully healthy. I'm going to play a little over-under game with you guys. 1,000 rushing yards. Can it be done from Isaiah Pacheco? Type O for over 1,000 or U for under 1,000. I think he gets there if he's healthy for all 17 games. Again, only 170 carries last year, and he got to 830. If he gets 50 more carries, that's that's pretty easy uh, in terms of getting over 1,000 if he's you know 4.6, 4.7 yards per carry. So O for over, U for under. Can he get there? Let us know what you guys think. Isaiah Pacheco also was asked about this, if he can reach 1,000 yards. He says, that's the goal, obviously. It starts here today in practice, day by day. And that's the approach any player has to have, but especially a young player who's, you know, gotten some hype early on here. Like, he's got to keep that level head, right? Like, he can't jump uh, to something he's not uh, quite reached, right? Like, what's the phrase? It's, uh, you can't sprint without learning how to jog or whatever it is. Like, he, he understands that. It's a day-by-day -day process. He was a seventh-round pick last year. Like, it's still a grind uh, to make it to the top. But I think he can become the first 1,000-yard rusher since 2017, which is, of course, when Kareem Hunt did it. We know how that ended, unfortunately. But I actually think Pacheco's a better pure runner than Hunt. Now Hunt's the better receiving uh, type of player. But in terms of ground and pound, uh, I think uh, this is one of the most talented rushers they've had since maybe even Jamal Charles, who, of course, was awesome for this franchise. Shout out to Roan for sponsoring today's show. I've been rocking their summer polos a lot uh, recently because uh, I don't know if you guys know, but it's hot as hell uh, in Texas in the summer. I'm sure you guys in the Midwest are struggling with that heat as well. But Roan's four-way stretch fabric makes you feel comfortable regardless of the temperature, regardless of if you're going to a business meeting, playing golf, uh, very versatile clothing uh, here. The commuter collection, which offers uh, polos, uh, quarter zips, dress shirts, pants as well. They're going to reinvent your closet just like they've reinvented the male's closet as a whole. Go to roan.com slash chat sports and use code chat sports to get 20% off today. It's R H O N E dot com slash chat sports code chat sports my favorite part about rona I, I always tell our viewers this machine washable clothing you're not going to have to go to the dry cleaners any longer throw this shirt in the wash and air dry it you're going to be good as new use code chat sports that link and promo code in the description and comments of this video 
Let's go from one running back to another seventh round pick to a former first round pick. Does Clyde Edwards Alaire have a role here? Um, he is entering this year in a different stage than he has in recent years, right? I mean, even with some early career struggles and injury problems, he still, even as recently as last year, third year in the NFL, entered the season as the starter. Now he enters this year as RB3. Trade rumors have surrounded the former first-round pick uh, throughout the offseason. Could he get dealt if there's an injury for a key team, or could maybe a team like the Giants trade for him now with the Saquon Barkley drama? Uh, can he play a factor in this offense knowing that it's an uphill climb considering he's RB3 right now? Well, he sat down with Adam Teicher of ESPN and uh, opened up a little bit. Uh, this is his mindset right now. He said, I can't think two years ahead from now or the position I will be in 12 months from now. It was really coming in and figuring out and seeing the things I can work on, and from that point uh, on rolling with it. I know what I have to do in order to get on the field and do the things I need to do this year. I think early on in training camp, as you look at Edwards Lair uh, career numbers here, it's been a decline partially due to injury. Last year, mostly due to uh, Pacheco's uh, emergence, is He's got to take advantage of reps early on. I mean, Pacheco's still not 100%, so that jar, that door is cracked ajar, if you will, uh, for a guy like Clyde Edwards-Alaire. But the bottom line is they took this guy in the first round because they thought he would be a dynamic weapon both as a runner and as a receiver. Hasn't happened. Uh, there's been some flashes, but he's not super explosive. I will blame the Chiefs a little bit in the sense that they haven't used him much as a receiver either, which is what I really thought he would be coming out of LSU, a guy who leaked out and maybe even occasionally would line up in the slot. They haven't done that at all. Now, part of that is Jarrett McKinnon's been that weapon, right? And he's just got a little bit more juice uh, than Edwards Alaire. He's been able to lengthen his career by getting better uh, as a pass protector, which he's excellent as, and as a receiver. But CEH finds himself in this weird spot where Pacheco's emerged. McKinnon is a trusty RB2 and catches the ball well. Great third down back. So what is an RB3's role in today's NFL? Not much, typically. Most teams go with that one-two punch. Uh, he also opened up about his struggles last year with ESPN. He said, you kind of focus in on what you need to focus on, and you go with that. You can't really shoot for the stars if you're not aiming for the things to get to the stars. You've got to get through some planets and some other things in order to get where you want to go. I didn't know this was an astronomy class, but uh, look, I'm rooting for the kid. He's done nothing wrong in terms of you know, preparation or working hard. He's had some bad luck with injuries. He seems like a good kid. Um, he just hasn't played great. He hasn't played poorly. He's just kind of like, eh, he's a rotation running back, right? Like, when you take it back in the first round, you expect a lot more. But bottom line is, is whether it's in Kansas City or with another franchise, I hope he gets another, you know, big-time chance to play because uh, I think uh, he's got some – uh, ability, not as much as we thought when he was coming out, uh, but uh, seems like a, a good guy, team first guy. I just think that battle is going to be an uphill climb here in Kansas City with the one-two punch of Pacheco and McKinnon. Now, can Clyde edwards alaire change the narrative in Kansas City? Can he get back to being a big-time player here? That would surprise me, but let me know what you guys think. Type Y for yes, or you can type in for no. Get your votes in down in the comments section. I still maintain that the best path for him is a fresh start elsewhere, and I think that would benefit both parties. I've talked about Daenerik Prince, who's that fourth running back right now, UDFA out of Tulsa. I think he's got big-time special teams ability, and uh, I think he can hold down that third running back role. And uh, you'd almost rather a guy like that be your third running back than a vet like Edwards Alaire, who you know could be at least a number two somewhere else. So I'm hoping a team you know throws a late-round pick at the Chiefs and trades for him. Maybe an injury happens elsewhere, and a team needs a back. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Now, our July subscriber battle with the Raiders report is ongoing, and we had a lead throughout most of the month, but in the last week or so, the Raiders report has surged forward to 180 new subs this month. We're sitting at 109, so still reachable, but need some new subscribers. So tell a friend uh, if you've already subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, hit that sub button. We're publishing videos every single day. Help us out. We're trying to knock down the Raiders this month. Okay, let's talk about Felix and Adike Uzoma, then we'll get out of here. He said dreams come true. It's a dream come true to play for his hometown team, of course, the Kansas City Chiefs. That was a cool moment. 
on draft night when he was the final pick of the first round, and uh, he got announced uh, in his hometown. Here's what he had to say for getting to play here. He said, I just had to soak it all in at first because I remember sitting in the stands. I believe it was 2013 sitting in the stands just watching all the guys, and then me actually walking on this grass uh, – pad just to come down to camp uh it's a dream come true but at the same time although i'm in this dream i have to show for it and yeah like i think it's one of those things where it's like that first time you go on the practice field at saint joseph for training camp like yeah soak it all in but after those three to five minutes like it's go time like you're a professional now they drafted you in the first round uh to be a pass rusher for this team and look you look at the depth chart like there are snaps there for the taking. I've maintained for months now that I think the Chiefs could sign another edge rusher to add to this rotation, but I know they paid Charles Aminahue. It's not like he's got this five-year, you know, 10-sack average or something like that. Like, he can lose snaps potentially. George Karloftis, second-year player, finished strong, but it's not like he's fully established. Like, there's an opportunity here for Felix Anadike Uzoma uh, to get some playing time and uh, hopefully he has a strong camp and uh, get some momentum going into week one. Now, how many sacks for Felix as a rookie? I'm thinking like over under three and a half, four and a half. I mean, he's not going to start at least at first probably. Four sacks? Carlos Dunlap had that last year, and they haven't re-signed him, at least not up to this point. Can you get four sacks out of the Rook? Let me know what you guys think right now. All right, that's it for today's Chiefs report. News and rumors roundup. We'll be back tomorrow with another video. Until then, go Chiefs.